So on this video, I want to talk about um, how the narcissist and particularly the covert narcissist uses um, certain tactics to to keep like the, abu the the tapes running in your mind, like the abuse tapes, so that um, it hinders you, it stops you from moving forward. Um, you know, um, in my case, I I have a a covert narcissistic mother who's very controlling. Um, she tried, she tried her hardest all my life to keep me in a scapegoat role. Um, I have a half sister who's nine years younger than myself, who um, is the golden child. She can't do anything wrong. And they tried to, my stepfather and my mother, all my life tried to put their the emotional baggage, the things that they couldn't face or deal with, they try to put that on me and have me take the weight of that. Um, that happened like from when my stepfather was with my mother from eight years old to 16. I left home at 16 and started working. Um, I got away from that. And the funny thing is when I started working, I was away working on deep sea boats that would go out to, to sea for weeks I'd be away for like months and the more I stayed away the more I wanted to stay away I just I, I figured out I could do a day's work I didn't need them um, and they knew that I didn't need them and what happened was when I moved out of home they started they had no scapegoat role so then what happens they turn on each other so they eventually after a year or so after I left home they broke up um, but yeah, like I was saying, the the family dynamic that I was unfortunately stuck in, uh, my, my mother and my stepfather, and later when my half-sister grew up, she played along with the, the family game and that dynamic, um, tried, to, tried to keep me into a scapegoat role. And myself, I'm quite, um, I stand up for what I believe in. Um, if, I think they're, if I think someone's wrong, um, I'll fight it. And that's what I'd done, that's why I was, and the more I'd done that, oh, the more I was attacked. <clears throat> but yeah, getting back to um, the tapes. So I left home um, at 16. By 26, I moved to Australia from New Zealand. That's my, where I'm from, New Zealand. I moved to Australia. Um, each time I got further away and I was doing well by myself, the tactics that my mother used were very covert, very, at the time I didn't know what was going on, but I just felt in my gut that there was something wrong. And what she used to do was she'll be, there was from eight years old to 16 years old, I was physically, physically abused by my stepfather. Every time he would beat my mother, I'd try to stick up for her and get beaten. Um, emotionally, psychologically abused by both of them because they were just, yeah, it was really toxic. Um, yeah, so so what would happen is the only people who knew about the abuse in our family was myself, my stepfather, and my mother. So they knew that I knew, and they were afraid that I was going to get away and tell people what the truth, you know, because they put up an image in our family that everything was fine, everything were like a normal happy family, everything's fine, everything's great. But that's what that what that's what um, toxic families do. They it's all about the image. They just want to look good. They don't care what is going on as long as they look good. They love their kids if they if they if the kids make them look good. If the kids don't make them look good, then they're discarded, throw it out, not loved. It's it's everything's conditional. So anyway, yeah, getting back again. When, like I said, I was the only one who knew about the abuse. Myself, my mother, and my stepfather. And so she knew that these memories hurt me. When I was in Australia, she'd be talking to me on the phone. She'd bring up this guy's name, that my stepfather's name, Barry. She'd say, oh, you know, when she could sense that I was doing well, she'd say, oh, I just run into Barry. He's doing really well. And she knows full well I don't want to even hear this guy's name. He's nothing to me. I got away from that. I don't want to hear, I don't want to know what he's doing where he is, what, I don't want to hear his name. Um, 
so yeah, as I was doing well, as, as I'd be telling you here that I was doing well with work in Australia, or I'd met a nice girl, I was dating, whatever, she'd use these little things to, to bring up a name like Barry, for example, because she knew, I knew, and only Barry knew the abuse that happened, that they got away with. Just to keep that, just the drop of that name would keep these memories just ticking over, just playing, playing these tapes of the abuse that only three of us knew about. My half-sister didn't know because she was too young. Um, she would, you know, use these tactics on... Um, it was only when she could sense that I was doing well and I was independent without her, she would, you know, first call up, say, oh, hi, I've just, I've gone out to get some milk. How are you doing? I thought, I'd, I, thought I wanted to hear your voice. I want to see how you're doing. And then <laughs> if I said, look, I'm going great, you know, I've just met this nice girl, I could hear like a kind of like upset tone in her voice, like, oh. So when she knew that I was doing well, then she'd bring up something like Barry or some other painful memory from the past by using trigger words. These trigger words would like have me know what she's doing, but it's between me and her. I only know the memories. She only knows the memories. It's between her and me and all she had to use was a word or the mention of someone's name to bring back all these painful memories that I wanted to forget about and move on from. Have, they would start having these tapes of the abuse rolling. And that is how these people work. They, they want to hinder you. They're going to set up roadblocks in your life. They're going, to, they're going to set up things to sabotage you. And this is a very, very real and underlying technique that they use to keep mental tapes of, of abuse or painful memories running to stop you moving forward. But it's covered. It's covered in, in love. It's covered like masqueraded as kindness, as, as caring, you know, and, and people outside of your relationship, they would see a mother being nice to their child, son or daughter, but they don't know that it's not their fault. They don't know. Only yourself, the, the person who was abused, and the narcissist using these techniques know what's going on. So the only way to deal with it is no contact, 100% no contact. Five years no contact now, never ever go back um but i just want to try and share like what i've been through if i can to i don't know maybe um throw some help out there or um get some validation um look the best thing for me is to not hold it in to i know what i know what's real i know my truth and i just want to get it out there so yep nice one guys hope you enjoyed